Good morning, good morning, Unity North. You can make a little more noise than that, can't you? For the beautiful music. Testing. And they end it right at 11.15. How do you do that? You know, I'm over here just yammering away, and I want to welcome those as I'm yammering away that you're already live and tuning in. We're grateful that you are here. I'm going to invite those of you in the room to grab a seat, and we're going to get started. I'm Reverend Richard Burdick. For those that don't know me, and for those that do know me, I am Reverend Richard Burdick. <laughs> And we are really, really blessed today. You know, it's the beginning of Advent, and I am like a kid in a candy shop when the season hits. Anybody else a kid in a candy shop excited about the lights and the glamour and the fun and the joy and the singing and the dancing and the kids, yes? Friday night, we had an amazing party with our kids downstairs, and I got to be in the middle of a snowball fight. I lost. And it was the best wonderful thing to lose that battle to our kids who are not only incredible snowball throwers, but we have a mystic in our, in our presence today. So as we start the Advent season, I'm going to invite Quinn Curry to come up and to let his reading be our poem today. And we're going to light the first candle of Advent. So Quinn, why don't you come up here? Why don't you stand right back here so we can see you? This young man has got a mean fastball, I tell you that. And that he is a man of con he's a young man of consciousness, of heart and connectedness. And so please welcome Quinn to for our opening prayer today. Go ahead. Yeah. Hope and faith are the promise of light that not yet awaken in those that sleep. Hope and faith are in every newborn's cry, in every flower underneath the snow, waiting to bloom in the spring. Hope and faith are the possibility of who we can become and the truth of who we really are. Hope and faith are the light in each of us which shines brightly. Hope and faith, the beginning of the mystery and the magic of Christmas and hope and faith in the youth of tomorrow yes great job Quinn thank you thank you thank you soak it up you're loved here all right good job so we're gonna sing our first carol of the season you can stay here and sing it with me if you want how many know the song go tell it on the mountain we are, as Unity students, we are called to proclaim the truth, to not just keep it in here, but to go out into the world and let everybody know that something is happening that's beautiful, something holy. Up on your feet as you are led. This is a hand clapping. Get your whole body involved in it. Come on. We're here to celebrate the light as we sing. Go tell it on the mountain over the hills and Take another shot at that. Let's hear it. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds kept their watching over silent flocks by night, behold, throughout the heavens, blow it now, now, there shone. every one of you that are joining us online. Thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you feel that there's a light that's between us that is as bright as it's ever been. Merry Christmas and happy holidays to each and every one of you. Thanks for tuning in today. There's somebody in the room you don't know. Say hi real quick. 
to that person you don't know. Introduce yourself. Don't be shy. And let's come on back now and sing that verse. While shepherds kept their watching. While shepherds kept their watching. Over silent flocks by sound wonderful. Please be seated. Well, good morning, Unity North. How are we doing? Excellent. Are we doing so good that we're going to go tell it on the mountain how much love there is in this place? Amen. I love it. I love it. And if this is your, if this is your first time here at Unity North and you're wondering, are we always this full of love, always this full of energy? The answer is yes, yes, yes and yes. And we take that love and our energy and we reflect it in so many different ways. One of those ways are our prayer chaplains that are seated around the room, holding us in light, holding us in love, no matter where we are, online or in the space. So thank you to Aileen, to Tara, to Teresa, to Judy. Thank you so much for holding us wherever we are. And Nancy, sorry, I had a list. My list was, was uh, needed updating. Thank you. All right, my friends. It is, uh, we have in front of us our welcome team, and our welcome team is ready to pour even more love on you, because that is what we do here at Unity North. They have Let's Connect packets in their hands, welcome packets in their hands, and you can fill out those Let's Connect cards uh, with pen and paper, you can scan in the QR codes, but we want to stay connected with you. So right now, if this is your first time here at Unity North, we want you to raise your hand nice and high in the air. We're gonna shower you with love and go tell it on the mountain that we are happy that you are here. So if this is your first Sunday here, please raise your hand nice and, hair so we, nice and high so we can recognize you. There we go. Let's keep our hands up until we get a welcome packet. We have some in the back. We are scattered all around the room. Thank you for choosing Unity North today. All right. Very special time, my friends. It is... It's announcement time. Let's find out what's happening in this beautiful, vibrant community. So much is happening this week. We've got our singles ministry that's happening today, 115 in the Peace Chapel. Men of Unity are meeting on December 9th, on Saturday, December 9th at 8.30 in Holy Grounds. Dances for Universal Peace, also on Saturday, but at 4.30 in the Exploration Room. Then coming up next Sunday, get ready for the LGBTQ Plus and Friends Ministry happening on Sunday at 12.45 in the Connections Room. And our Support group for widows and widowers is back Sunday, December 10th at 1 p.m. in the Joy Room. So much is happening in this place. Make sure you check out the app, check out the website to stay in touch with what is going on. And in our next announcement, our Christmas match is coming up. So many ways to get involved. We try to keep it simple, but also give you many points of entry. So you can scan this QR code with your phone and click on the link that pops up. You can visit the website and select Christmas match to find out more information, or you can use the special envelopes in the seat backs in front of you. So many different ways to get involved in our Christmas match and help this amazing community. And in our next announcement, yes, we want to make sure that we are strengthening our community, but also the community outside of these doors. And our Angel Tree program just, 
does just that. So in Holy Grounds, uh, there's a big Christmas tree with lots of paper angels. Pick a paper angel, and you want to bring back a gift by December 21st that will help a family in need. So again, we help ourselves, but we also help strengthen the community that is around us. And in our last announcement, just a reminder, which businesses are featured in the 2024 Business Directory? It could be yours. It could be yours. It could be yours. But you need to go to unitynorth.org to find out more information to find out how to promote your business in 2024 so that we can all support each other. Right now, we have a lovely melody. We are joking. We have a duet that's coming up to the stage. We know the name Chelsea Douglas. We know the voice of Chelsea Douglas. And right now, we are going to be blessed with the voice of Chelsea D Douglas singing a joyful, joyful medley. Put your hands together. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Feel free to sing along. started so many beautiful songs that I have known and loved for years and this is another one that I love that I would love for you guys to sing along with us spirit in the room.
Chelsea Douglas, Brian Reed. Isn't it amazing to be in the miracle of life forever evolving, unfolding, and becoming? I, it's been really a blessing over the, the years that Chelsea's been singing for us to see her come in and be a little bit afraid of us, not, showing who, not sure who we were, and then to celebrate her relationship with her beloved, and now to celebrate Gloria. Life and love is unfolding through her and as her. We celebrate with you, and we celebrate this new, wow, where'd that come from? This new beautiful birth that you are bringing into this. And I can't think of, it, of a child that would be more blessed to have a mom as beautiful and holy and sacred as you. Thank you for sharing that with us. <laughs> Almost wanted to say, will you be my mom? <laughs> One of my favorite quotes of all time is by the German philosopher, philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche. I'm sure you've heard the name before. You've probably heard the quote before, but I want it to be the foundation of the house that we build today. Let's go ahead and put it up there and let's read it together. And those that were seen dancing were thought to be insane by those who could not hear the music. Anybody ever feel like that? In a world that seems to be a little bit messed up, you're dancing anyway. You're singing anyway. You're going through life and you're bringing more light and love even when it doesn't make sense to the people around you. That's our job, is to bring light to the darkness. That's our job, is to bring hope to the hopeless. To be the ambassador of what is good and holy in the world even when the rest of the world cannot see it. Every advancement, every advancement throughout time, since the beginning of time, every quantum leap in wisdom, in knowledge, in evolution, in possibility, in innovation, in invention and healing was made by, by people who heard music nobody else could hear and who danced regardless of the judgment of the world, regardless of the judgment of anybody. They said, I'm hearing the music and I'm going to dance. That's how we evolve as a human race. This Advent season, I want you to hear music like you've never heard it before and I want you to be the fool. And to dance, even if you don't think you can dance, go ahead and move your body to the rhythm of something higher and better and more beautiful and more holy and more sacred. We are entering the season of Advent, a season of possibility, a season of singing and music and dancing, a season of inner music that creates outer dancing and outer change and outer miracles. How many people in the room still believe in miracles? That's why I'm here. You know, Einstein said you can live life two ways as if nothing is a miracle or as if everything is a miracle. I don't care which one you live, but just be the miracle. And hold on to the truth that you can be the miracle, that you are the miracle, that you are the Christ in form being born. Each moment that you allow yourself to listen to the music. Each moment that you choose to dance anyway. It's a season of celebrating the great alchemist, Jesus the Christ. The anointed one, that's what Christ, we learned last week, Christ just means the anointed one. And then we were a little bit on the edge and we said, yes, we too are also anointed, yes? How many of you lived your life this week as if you are chosen and anointed and appointed to be the light of the world? Well, the good news is there's still several weeks of Advent, so <laughs> the four or five of you that put your hand up and said, yeah, baby, I'm dancing, please go infect the rest of this congregation. Because the, everybody in this room has been anointed and appointed. And we claimed that about ourselves and invited ourselves into a deeper listening to the music that maybe we hadn't heard all year long, but to a deeper listening and a dancing experience of greater action. Yes, I'm going to talk about action today. It's one of my sermons that you get a lot of, that faith without works is dead. Faith without works is stagnant. Put your body behind your prayers. Put your feet behind your meditations and allow this gift of a beautiful body that has been given to you to be active and moving and stirring in the world. Advent is a season of divine ideas. We teach in the unity movement that everything in this world is based upon a divine idea in the mind of God. Everybody in this room is a divine idea. Humanity is a divine idea. The Christ, the light, the chair, the, the candles, the child, the beautiful child that read the poem, the beautiful child that was singing along with his mother, his or her mother, 
His mother. I got it right. It's all a divine idea, and our job is to be the portal through which divine ideas are made manifest on earth. Our job is to be the vehicle and to consciously, with deep awareness, realize that we are the vehicle, we are the Mary, we are the Joseph, where the Christ can be born onto humanity, not 2,000 years ago, but right here, right now, in your skin, in the seat that you're sitting in. So turn to somebody to your left and your right and say, you are Mary, you are Joseph, and you are the Christ. You know, we have been accused of being multi-personalities uh, here at Unity North, so you could be Mary, Joseph, the divine masculine, the divine feminine, and the Christ and the light all at the same time, yes? The divine ideas that we're working with today are hope and faith. Say that with me. Hope and faith. Are they the same thing? You could, you could say that. Good answer, whoever said no. It could be, it could be a yes, it could be a no. Today I want to explore these two divine ideas and see how they are both partners, but very unique, different ways of approaching the Advent season. They are two sisters that serve as a foundation of change, as a foundation of miracle making, of living and exploring and advancing and evolution and growth. Two sisters that can and will create miracles by right of our consciousness here today. Yes? So what is the miracle that you're creating today as Mary? As Joseph, what is the miracle that you are dancing into expression? I want to hear it. I don't, this, is a, this is not um, listen to a monologue. I want to hear from you. What miracle are you creating this season? Joy, community. What else? Family. Peace of mind. Vision, giving. All of the above are divine ideas that you are downloading onto the planet that you have been selected and anointed to bring to the planet, those and a thousand more, yes? Are you willing to accept the responsibility? You know, there are people that say that Christmas, oh, started when there was a knock at an innkeeper's door. Oh, no, 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 the birthing began long before that, and I won't get into the details of how that baby came to be. We're not gonna argue about that. But there was a divine appointment when a young lady, a young teenage lady said, yes. I'm willing to be that vehicle and that portal through which something is born. We're not going to argue about the details, but we're going to certainly say that that is an example for us in life to be the miracle, to bring the miracle. We have to say yes. How many of you are really willing to do the work, to change at depth, to accept the responsibility that you are the light of the world? Are you really, yeah, there's a little more reluctance there. Well, I'll get back to you on that. You know, what, what would have happened to the planet if Mary had said at some point, you know, that's an interesting idea. I'll get back to you on that. <laughs> God, I'll have my people call your people. And I might want to have a conversation with my husband. But you know, it's not just the divine feminine that said, yes, there is a man. And we talked about this in the first service. The culture ostracized these people. They, they were ostracized. Joseph had every right to get up and pack up and leave. Yet he also said yes. And so there must be a marriage of the divine masculine and the divine feminine for the miracle to occur. There must be a marriage of hope and faith. There must be a marriage of mind and heart for the good to come into expression. And like any miracle, like any music, are you listening to the music? It needs structure. We talked about that a few months ago. Music needs structure in order to to evolve in order to birth and to become a structure of form, a structure of knowing, and yes, a structure of action. Say that with me, a structure of action. This morning we're gonna talk about hope and faith not as esoteric ideas, not ethereal ideas that feel good in this room and then we go out into the world and we forget them. I'm talking about practical application of spiritual law. Practical application of the yes that you give to spirit being made a yes on earth. As you take the steps and you take the, the actions and the movement in your life to dance. And to dance even when it's not comfortable. So we have these concepts of faith and hope not as esoteric ideas but as dimensional practical realities. So we're going to talk about dimensions today. Hope is a horizontal dimension. Hope is an earthly experience. I'm talking about hope on our day to day walking through the earth being a human being partnering with the sister called faith, which is a vertical dimension, a vertical reality. 
Now, we know the symbol of the cross, and I always get a little bit irritated when I go to these walk through Bethlehems at churches around here, and I think, this was so beautiful, so beautiful, and I get to the end, and there's a person hanging on the cross. Can we just spend a moment on the birth and the creativity? And the reality, the cross that I know doesn't have a man on it. In some of these places, it, there's a man still on it. I'm saying that's not the end of the story. The end of the story is the man off the cross, the Christ elevated, the light elevated. And yes, there will be times when you are, I love that I got an amen there. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The reality is, let's just spend a little time in the birthing the cross as a symbol of creativity, a symbol of birth. Let's contextualize it a little bit differently. We have the horizontal hope partnering with the sister of faith and you have a cross and in the center is where miracles happen where hope and faith are so active and alive and activated in our minds and in our hearts that something is being birthed through us. Yes, it's much less. The cross is not a symbol for me of sacrifice and suffering, but it's a symbol of creativity and birth as two-dimensional realities come into play and we meet in the middle, and that's where fourth dimension, fifth dimension, seventh dimension, and up and up and on and on come into play. We're not defined by the human experience, are we? Do we always know that? I don't always know that. I had several human experiences this week, and I was anything but ministerial in those moments. I lost my vertical reality for a moment, but I picked myself up, got up, stood up, and said, oh, I remember who I am, and I met at the cross once again. In Hebrews chapter 11, St. Paul writes this. I'm going to invite you to put that scripture up there. Let's read it together. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. In the first half of this statement, substance and hope are in relationship. Substance. What is substance? Wood. Everything in this world has, has some kind of substance, and it's put together. And our hope is the understanding that as we dream, as we vision, as we allow ourselves to be the portal, that this beautiful earth home that we are in will provide all the substance we need to have that dream. Anybody live in a house? All the substance of that house were provided by the earth, by the horizontal experience. We're provided by the care of an earth home that is absolutely there for each and every one of us. It's a partnership between longing, I long for something, I long for the house, I long for the better life, and the matter, the matter that is provided to me to create externally manifestation. There's a lot of people that say, you know, you don't teach manifestation like other Unity ministers, and you're, they're absolutely right. I see a world so focused only on the one-dimensional reality, I can get the car, I can get the house, I can get the relationship, and they're living on the horizon, and that's it. There's no vertical reality. I'm saying there has to be a vertical reality or you're just a greedy son of a gun. I get more. I get more. I have more. And there are those that are criticized for a prosperity gospel. I'm going to challenge that idea a little bit, but those who are living only on a horizontal reality are coming from the ego and the mind. And it's all about getting and claiming, and there's nothing wrong with that. I want to be real clear here today. There's nothing wrong with that. Earth and desire, you're here for a purpose. Go ahead and have desire. Desire for more stuff, for more things, for more experiences, for more relationship. Go ahead and have them, because it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Didn't say, no, you only get to have a little bit. I don't believe in a God that wants you to suffer. I don't believe in a God that wants you to play small. Playing small is actually a disservice to the presence of God that chose to do business as you. Oh, no, not mine. No, it is yours. Go for it. And I'm not going to begrudge you as a spiritual person that you're going after making the best life for yourself when you share it with others. When the home that you built is opened up to the, to the, the, ho the unhoused. When the home that you've built is opened up for a greater expression of love in that home, that desire to know that life can be better on the horizon. I'm looking ahead. Life can be better. And all the tools I need, all the substance I need will be provided just on this horizontal level. Yes? It's a hope that my life can be better. And as a potter, 
You know, this is the kingdom of heaven has been given to us. God, life, source, substance has been put into our hands. You're sitting at a potter's wheel, and it's just a big lump of clay. But you have the ability to mold that clay the way you like. I went to see an art display just down the street at the art center. Sonia Osio was there showing her art, and it was beautiful, beautiful stuff. And around each corner, there was probably 30, 40 artists that were absolutely displayed. And after each corner, it was like, ooh, look what's been created out of a lump of clay. It was the same substance underneath, yet somebody chose to take that clay and make it an angel, make it a dog, make it a tree, make it modern art. But every corner, there was a different expression. I was a little bit partial to Sonia Osia's art, but I'm a little partial to her anyway because I think she hangs the moon. But the reality is there was beauty everywhere I turned. Unique people who said, I'm going to create out of a lump of clay. That's what we're called to do at Advent. To know that the essence and the presence of God itself as energy, as force, as fire, as possibility has been placed on your potter's wheel and you get to determine what you're going to do with it. And what I love about that is by grace, you make a bowl, you don't like the bowl, you can start again. A new choice. At the center of the horizontal and the vertical is the place of choice. It is the place of grace. We get to choose the life we are creating. And those who are only on the horizontal level, defining themselves by the human experience, they're suffering. I got no choice. I'm a victim of the world and what it's showing me. You're not a victim to anything. And I'm, if I give you any message today, it's to know that you are empowered by the presence of God doing business as you to manifest the life that you want to manifest the life that you desire. All the tools of creation have been placed into your mind, your heart, and into this body. Put your hands out there. I am the potter together. God is the clay. Wow, that's a little bit different than they teach in other places. Because it means responsibility. I don't like what I'm creating. I can do it again. No, I can blame God. Darn clay, you should have been something different. Doesn't work that way. The clay is going to respond to your hands. The clay of life, of love, of light, of God, of substance is going to respond to the direction you give it. You are an artist, yes? yes? Every one of you is an artist, and the life that you have created is either a work of art, by your definition, matters not what anybody else says about it. Your life is a work of art, and if you don't like the work of art, start again, because each day, each breath, each thought, each feeling has a new lump of clay for you to manifest life. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Substance and hope together. In the second half of that scripture, we read the words, the evidence of things not seen. Does that mean blind faith? That's what it's been interpreted out. Oh, I'm just going to have faith that God's going to provide it. I'm going to maybe define that a little bit differently for you. It's a connection to the higher vibration, a vertical reality that I am connected to the mind of God, to the divine ideas been downloaded into my experience that does not rely on my five senses is not defined by the horizontal experience at all. It is a vertical awareness that it's already done in the mind of God. So the dream and the miracle that you mentioned earlier, I want you to say with me, in the mind of God, it's done. Together? And if you don't like the word God, that's okay. In the mind of the one, it's done. That rhymes better. In the mind of the one, it's done. Together? In the mind. That's a vertical reality. That's a reality of truth that is partnering with the earth so God and the earth, the one and earth, are partnering for you to have the life that you want, putting the clay into your hands. It's a living in the mind of God rather than the mind of limitation. Limitation, endless possibility. It is internal evidence of what's over the next hill before I get there. Any hikers in the room? Sure. You already know what's on the other side of the mountain before you get there. You're living in the energy, the feeling, the world was living in the vibration of the birthing of a light on the planet before it showed up, before a man showed up, before a consciousness was changed. So I understand the good that's on the other side of that mountain before it shows up. But I have to take a step to get there, don't I? I'm going to wish myself on the other side of that massive mountain. I don't want to hike up the hill. So let me sit here and meditate. Nope, I'm not there yet. 
Let me sit here and pray. Nope, I'm not there. What I'm talking about is a connection with God that has me already living internally in what is next before it arrives. The lump of clay is not a lump of clay. It's done. It's complete. And I allow my body to simply be the ambassador of what's already living in me in every cell of my body, my mind, my heart, and my spirit. So the miracle that you talked about earlier, that you threw into the environment, already lives as a reality at a higher dimension of being. Advent is both an internal and an external arrival. Let's say this together. Advent, both an internal and an external arrival. Everything in this world was created twice, first in mind, then in reality. The vertical reality must be there. If you cannot envision it, if you cannot welcome it into your field and live and breathe and have your being in that vision, it will not happen horizontally. It cannot happen on earth. So the advent we're talking about, the birthing of the light, the Christ, is an internal experience first and foremost. Christmas must happen in you. Or whatever holiday. Kwanzaa must happen in you first. Hanukkah must happen within you first before it is a physical reality. Therefore, the vertical is important. We cannot put the cart before the horse. We cannot put effect before the cause. We are the cause of a new reality for ourselves individually and for the world. I'm living it. I'm knowing it. I'm experiencing it before it was manifested. Well, there we go. He said the word. Manifestation. Absolutely. I teach manifestation every day from this platform. Manifest it first within and quit worrying about the effects on the manifest world out here. It will show up as a result of what you're manifesting in here. The vertical guides the horizontal and we meet in the center. That cross is a symbol of birthing and expression and both must be present. So let's, start, let's explore the horizon a little bit. No matter where you're standing on earth, no matter where you happen to be, Timbuktu or right here at Unity North, there is a limit to how far you can see on the horizon, yes? It gets a little fuzzy. The sky and the land begin to melt the sky together and the sky and the ocean become one. We can only see as far into the horizon that our human eyes will allow or our human wisdom will allow. But we must still look anyway. These are a gift. There is a stopping point, the edge of our wisdom, our capabilities, and the edge of our vision. As we dream of what can be tomorrow, what can be over the next mountain, we hope that it will be good. We hope it will be filled with blessings. We hope that there's going to be amazing experiences and adventures on the other side of the hill. But if we, all we do is hope as wishing, nothing happens. It requires dancing. Dance with me right now. Come on. Be willing to be the fool and dance. Okay, I got a couple of fools. Welcome to my foolish playground. Let them dance. Hey, there is Sonia Oseo. You're here today. The angel of the Lord appeared. I got my trainer over there. Did Paul Feldman really get up and just show his hips? <laughs> Baby, that's what we got to do. Be willing to look the fool, but you got to move your body. You gotta be willing to do something. The longing requires external movement and travel. There's a box, right? I hope the box is still there in front of the, right here, in front of the advent. You know, that box showed up today, and I, I know it's really good. I know there's a lot of good sweetness in there. I'm gonna just hold that that box is mine. Would you pray with me? Let's all pray together that that box has goodness in it. I, oh yes, it's my box, it's good, it's holy, it's sacred, it's amazing. <sighs> yep, that box is really good. Wonder what's in it. <laughs> a whole bunch of people on the planet are worrying about what's in the box and they don't dance. They don't move. They don't pray and then move their feet. They don't get this beautiful gift of a body and use it. So there it sits. Close as the breath you just took. The miracle that you put out there is as close as the breath you took. But you got to be active. You got to take the steps. Without action, hope becomes merely wishing. Hope in its fullness and in its potential is being willing to look the fool and dance when nobody else can hear the music. 
It's willing to go. There might not be anything in that box, but I'm going to open it anyway. Open, open, open. Remember that commercial? Was it a Mervyn's commercial? Open, 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 open. I'm saying the universe is echoing back to us. Open, open, open. Open, 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 open. And move. That's what hope. The horizontal reality requires us to be active pre participants in the good and in the miracle. It's willing to go after the substance, the clay that might be in that box as a potter, to go to the store and buy the clay. Or as Sonia does, she loves to often say, could you, Papa, could you go pick up the clay for me and drop it off? <laughs> you find a way to make the miracle happen and get to the box, yes? Now there's a whole bunch of people that would say that's a prosperity gospel. You know, I happen to like Joel Osteen a lot. And I really like Andy Stanley. And let me tell you, the Christian world has just beat them down, criticized them. And the more that they get beat down, the more they rise to the occasion. Because these two people and ministers and many others are preaching a prosperity gospel. You are meant to thrive. You are meant to experience the good in the box. And they will tell you that if you go pick up the box, that's of the devil. Man, I'm not listening to those people. It's of the devil. It's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Go get the box, pick it up, and start forming the clay. Have experiences. You are meant to have experiences and to surround yourself with prosperity and live in the fullness of the experience, the horizon, the earthly realm, and to experience the juice. Suck the marrow out of this amazing experience. And those that are telling you that that's of the devil are a bit short-sighted. And I'll be so bold I may take some heat for this, but maybe it's because don't get the box because I get the box and you have to suffer. I'm going to build my church and my empire. That's for me, and you're egotistical if you don't go for it. I need to go get another airplane. Oh, my gosh. Okay, I'll stop there. I just became very judgmental. <laughs> back up. My friend Lester reminded me to wear different glasses today, and so I'm going to well step back from that one, but the reality is there is a necessary understanding that we are meant to be prosperous. On this earthly plane, we are meant to experience the richness of being on earth. Yes? You know, there are three frogs sitting on a log. And there are three frogs. And two of those frogs decide to jump into the lake. How many frogs are on the log now. Three. You were here first service. It's an easy question because deciding is not doing. Plain and simple. I decide that I want the clay in that box and I decide and I meditate and I pray yet I never get it because people are telling me that's selfish. It is selfish if I don't open the box and then spread the good that's in that box to everybody. And I'm going to use her as an example again since she's in the room. Sonia Osio makes these beautiful creations. And the first thought in her head is, who can I give this to? She could sell them for eight, nine, a hundred dollars, a thousand dollars. And she goes, who would be blessed by what I've just created? I want to be like Sonia when I grow up. And she lives a Christed way. The woman does not hurt for prosperity in her life. She can travel anywhere on the planet whenever she wants and have a ticket ready to go. And it's because, she goes, who will be blessed by my creation? You see, that's where the prosperity gospel finds its roots and its meaning. I create things to share with the world and to raise the vibration, the creativity, and the love on the planet. I'm jumping into the lake, and I'm inviting everybody to jump into the lake with me, and let's dance like a frog in the middle of the lake. Faith, the vertical reality. Anybody know that uh, the people who are wandering through the desert, this is what in the Bible Moses was. He was depending strictly on a horizontal reality. I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to make it happen. He never gets to the promised land because he's trying to do it all on his own. There must be a vertical reality. The Father and I are one. This is the Christ consciousness that was born. The energy of a vertical understanding and dimension is involved in my horizontal steps in my life. Jesus, the great example that we're celebrating, a man who was anointed to the Christ, it was a great example. He very intentionally informed his horizontal walk with a vertical mindset. Where did he go? Where did he go? What did he do? 
He went to the high place. He went to the mountain. He went to the upper room. This is telling us there must be a vertical reality and dimension component to our creative process, yes? So where do you go? And I want, this is not a, meta, a, a, a rhetorical question. I want to know where you go. Where is your upper room? Did somebody say in the car? God bless you. I need to sit at your feet and learn how to do that. Where do you go? The garden. You go outside. You find the place that is conducive to the birthing process. And that's home to you. David Castellini is sitting right there. I know where first he goes. He's gone to the forest. Here I am. I feel home. I have a vertical reality. And the trees remind me of a vertical reality. I'm not here alone. I'm not doing this birthing process alone. But there's an energy and a power working through me and as me. Deeper question, where do you go internally? Your heart? Right here? Heart? I want you to answer that question in such a way that this Advent season that something beautiful is born. I know where I go externally. I know where I go internally. And magic happens horizontally and vertically. And I meet at the center of that cross. And that's where creation happens. That's where miracles happen. Yes? Each step into the horizon must be anchored, informed, and empowered by a vertical reality. My hopeful words are connected to deeper truths. These human words are connected to deeper truth. Let's read this quote together. My hopeful actions are blanketed with the truth that I am living in the mind of God as a current reality, not a distant one. Let there be peace on earth. Let there be peace on earth. I'm keeping peace on earth at bay. I like to sing now. Now there is peace on my little plot of earth in the garden, in the forest, in the car. That right now there is peace on earth because I am the Mary and the Joseph and the Christ and I'm the donkey. I'm the wise one. I'm the shepherd. I'm whatever it takes to follow the inner light because there's a vertical reality in partnership with the horizontal reality. And here's a, a reality that I want you to know. The higher you go, the farther you see, right? Basic law. The higher you go, the farther you're going to see. So if I want to see higher, I cannot see to where the journey is over the mountain. Let me climb a pole. Already, you've increased the ability to see farther into the horizon. Well, David's going to go climb the tree. Let me go climb the tree and get really high. I can now see farther. Get in an airplane. Don't you love that view when you get in an airplane and you can see the arc of the earth? Suddenly, things are clearer. Destinations are clearer. How to get from point A to point Z is much clearer. I'm saying let's get in a spaceship. Let's consciously go to a cosmic level and rise above the earthly experience at a vertical level that now I can be one with the entire horizontal experience. I can begin to see where I need to take the next step to get the good that is waiting for me. The higher you go, the farther you're going to see. I think it was Zig Ziglar who said uh, that your attitude determines your altitude. I think that's a pretty good statement. Your attitude on the horizontal plane, what you were thinking, what you were feeling, what you were welcoming into your environment on the horizontal plane, that attitude is going to increase the altitude. I can now see farther, but I like to take Zig Ziglar a little farther because it's a great circle. On the horizontal plane, my attitude is, is, is guiding my altitude, and the higher I go, my altitude then increases the magnitude, the magnitude of the miracle, the magnitude of the expression, the magnitude of the relationship, the magnitude of the job, the magnitude of whatever happens to be for you is now expanded. The view is like looking at the earth. Oh, this is what it means. This is what it's about. I can do this. It's an awareness of the Christ that, oh my gosh, as good as life is, it's a hundred times better when I have this view. Anybody ever had that view before? That's the view. That's a miracle. I want us to have this Christmas and not just be another passing, oh, aren't the lights pretty? Wasn't the, the carol pretty? If that's what you get, that's great. That's a very horizontal reality. Let this Christmas and this Advent be a vertical reality where we can see the magnitude of what is possible, not just for you, but for the earth. 
Einstein said this. Let's go put one more quote up there in the band. You can come back up now. Let's read it together. Everything is energy, and that's all there is to it. Match the frequency of the reality you want, and you cannot help but get that reality. Plain and simple. I'm having an earthly experience, and I will match the vibration of a God awareness, a power, a good, a holiness, a sacredness, and when they meet in the center, life happens. Life begins like a machine to pop on all cylinders. That's our job this Advent. I'm gonna rephrase Albert Einstein. Yes, that is blasphemy if you ever wanna say it. But to the point, it, what he's saying there is another way. When I am in the vertical vibration of faith, I become a hopeful magnet. And life comes, miracles occur, and the impossible becomes the possible. Say that with me, the impossible becomes the possible. That's what Jesus did. He's our example. We're called to do the same. The good in that place that I am seeking is now seeking me because I am at a vibration of the good is now out to bless the whole world. I can share it with Marilyn. I can share it with Dee. I can share it with Christine who's dancing. I can share it with Paul Feldman as he dances. And we dance together. And we come to a higher and deeper reality that we belong to each other. I'm saying raise the vibration and know that the good that you are seeking, the health you are seeking, the prosperity you are seeking, the box that you are seeking is seeking you. One thing we teach in this universe, it's cause and effect. I take one step towards my good, that good is taking a thousand steps towards me. And so rather than staying at the top of the stairs going, I wish that box would make it to me, I wish that good would get to me, I know it's gonna be wonderful and great, I take a step. And what happens, you are now a magnet, a holy magnet. You can call this the law of attraction. I like to call it the law of magnetization. The law of vibration, it's spiritual law and it's ripe. But the possibility that in this room right now, as I take a step, somebody could go over there, pick up that box and bring it to me. Somebody in this room could walk over there right now, pick up that box as I take another step and meet me halfway. That's what community is about. Somebody could. <laughs> of all people in this room, she's the one. I take a step towards good. Wait a minute, don't leave. Don't leave, Kim. Come stand right here. Now the good and the box has been shared, and two of us have partnered in the miracle that we are praying for. Two of us have partnered in the possibility of what might be in this great chest. She's probably not going to want to eat this, but I bet her kids will. The reality is, I get some great good. Oh, there's some really good sweet chocolate. Belgian seashells. Representation of sweetness, a representation of the ocean. And I partnered with Kim Strickland as the presence of God, as the Christ. So when I get my good, she gets her good too. And those of you who didn't come up, I'm sorry, we're out. I want this to be a reality that the prosperity gospel is about creating some good for Kim Strickland, as much as it is from creating some good for me. This is the law of vibration, the law of attraction, the law of sharing. And I have a little music behind, it would be great. Our job this holiday season is to recontextualize that cross, let it be a part of the story, and let's meet in the middle. Let's meet in the place that you and I are the same person. There's only one of us here, the Christ, the Buddha, the light, the Atman, the Tao, the one. And when I take a step, and you take a step, and Paul dances, and Chris dances, Michael dances, somehow there is an exponential good, and we can see above the horizon and beyond the horizon that peace on earth, peace in Israel, peace in Ukraine, peace for the people of Palestine and Hamas. Really? Yes, really. People in Russia, yes, because we're above the fray and the horizon is now contextualized by a greater power that's more powerful than bombs, more powerful than hate, more powerful than duality. 
And so our pray today, our prayer today is open the eyes. I open the eyes of my heart that my vertical reality and my horizontal experience is birthing something new and beautiful. We're going to go into meditation now. I invite you to take a deep breath with me. And I invite you to be keenly aware of where your mind is, elevated or low. I invite you to be keenly aware of where your horizontal life is right now and to bring the two into partnership. We got any music? I need a key. All right, take a deep breath with me. I open the eyes of my heart, Lord. I open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Take your hand and place it on your heart. I open the eyes of my heart, Lord. I open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Take those hands now and put them out to your side like this and sway with me. I open the eyes of my heart. You are the cross. I open the eyes of my heart, fully human, fully dying. I want to see you. I want to see you. One more time. I open the eyes of my heart, Lord. I open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see Our hope and our faith shall be rewarded with the opening of the inner eyes and the inner sanctuary. Let's stay here as Averill leads us in a meditation. Before you close your outer eyes, I invite you to take a moment and just look around the room. Look around and see Christ's consciousness expressing, manifesting as each and every pair of eyes you meet. And then now after indulging that outward going tendency of our senses, I invite you to close your eyes. Close the eyes and bring your attention inward by first being aware in stillness of your body. Having a moment of gratitude for this gift that is a body, this vehicle, this suit, knowing we are so much more than body. But for these moments, giving it the gift of relaxation Letting it settle down. Letting the chair hold it. Let the body settle into effortlessness, like unclenching a fist systemically. Let the body remain in that place of stillness as you connect with your breath. The breath was there all along, but now you are bringing it into the forefront of your consciousness. Beginning to take slow, smooth, seamless, silent breaths. Exhaling and inhaling letting one breath like a silken thread dissolve into the next. Elevate and emphasize the breath. Noticing how that contributes to the relaxation of the physical body. Then bringing your attention to the feeling of the breath 
flowing in your nostrils. Just notice that subtle sensation, thousands of nerve endings. Feel them stimulated by the current, the flow. Bring all of your attention to the feeling of the breath in your left nostril. Without doing anything to your facial muscles or your body, just notice the feeling of the breath in the left nostril. That is faith and hope. It's lunar, feminine, cool, internal. Feel the breath flowing on the left side. Then just gently adjust your attention so the feeling of the breath is now in the right nostril. This is the nostril of positive action. Solar. Masculine. External. Warm. And gently shift your attention one more time, letting your body remain in stillness to the feeling of the breath at the bridge between the nostrils. The wedding, where both energies are flowing evenly and you are in balance. Just for a moment, feel the synchrony, the flow, of the breath at the bridge between the nostrils. Letting that anchor us as we continue to journey now along the vertical plane. Take that awareness up to the top of your head and then exhale down, down, down your spine internally saying, I am. Inhale up your spine, that. Listen to the breath, it's already saying this. Exhaling down, I am. Inhaling up, that. You can't do this wrong. A few more breath cycles at your own pace. Listen to how your breath reminds you of your true nature. Exhaling down, inhaling up. I am that, I am that, I am that, I am that. Body in stillness. Now follow the breath. It is the star into your heart. And settle in the manger Still breathing out and in, I am that. In that space, remember who you are, right in your heart, in between the thoughts, the doubts, the itches, the sounds. I am that, I am Joseph, in that space. I am Mary. I am anointed. I am the Christ consciousness. Remain in that space.
observe the silence, the silence of the great I am that is your true nature. Remain aware of that silence. Feel it in your heart, even if you were distracted, as you reflect on the relative quietness of your mind at this time, the spaces between the thoughts. Notice the smoothness of your breath. Feel the stillness of your body. Bring back the silence as you gently open your eyes. The world needs you to be hopeful and to take the action. The world needs you to be faithful and to remember you're not alone. The world needs you to listen to listen to the music that's calling you forth. And the world needs you to say, yes, I'm willing. And then the world needs you to take the steps to dance whenever and wherever you are called. And so it is. Thank you. And as we are starting to move into offering time, we can take this opportunity to really raise the vibration. We take this holy duo of hope and faith and make it a holy triad of hope, faith, and action. And as our ushers are coming forward with our offering baskets and our prayer box also comes forward, we recognize that there are many ways to give, many ways to make this a holy triad and put action, coupling action with hope and faith. And we can do so in the baskets that are before us. We can give online or in the app. We also, again, give thanks for our prayer chaplains on duty as they are holding the prayers in this box in the holiest of love and light and together we give thanks for our blessing so let's say our offering blessing together I am so blessed I am so prosperous and it is my great pleasure to share of my blessings and to share of my prosperity and in the giving the entire world is blessed thank you God please sing our offering song with us I am so I do want to let you know and reiterate the Christmas match that's happening. There are people that have taken action, angel donors who in this congregation have stepped up to say, let's, let's take the budget, let's take the end of the year and make it the most prosperous and beautiful we can ever make it be. What, do, Sylvie, do we have a number? 18. So members of this congregation have come up with $18,000 and they're saying to you, match it. Match it. And let's raise $36,000. Plus, amen. It's a, it's a Christmas miracle. The piano is coming to life and he's not touching it. But the reality is there's a challenge been set by angel donors who said, let's make this the best possible. I invite you to use the envelope above and beyond your tithing to meet that match. Right now, the miracle that is this beautiful woman, Chelsea Douglas, is coming forth. And the miracle of Brian Reed, who's going to avoid that one note. You got it? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have a healing today. 
Put all your energy on that piano and let's have a healing and somehow it's going to work. But right now, put your hands together and welcome Chelsea Douglas back up to the platform. Let this be a challenge to each of you. You're broken down and tired of living life on a merry-go-round. And you can't find the fighter, but I see it in you, so we gon' walk it out. We'll move. So when we rise up with the invitation in the garden that we rise up in consciousness and truth, we can sing Gloria in excelsis Deo because at that elevated place, glory to God in the highest consciousness. Yes? We're going to end with that glory to God. Glory. And I invite you to move your hips like Paul Feldman. And I invite you to let the music sing like Chelsea Douglas. Let's go ahead and kick this in. Glory at a court. We haven't quite had a healing on that keyboard yet. We have the hands of a potter and a master. 
Let's do it from the top. <laughs> 